Hello everyone and welcome back to the second installment of Hacking Evergreen. I'm your host, Blake GH. So far we've installed uh, VirtualBox and we've installed Ubuntu 1604 as a virtual machine and we have logged in successfully with our user and now we're going to need to download and install what's known as Docker Engine. We're going to put that on the virtual machine. So we can just Google that 1604 Docker Engine installation. And the one that I used is DigitalOcean. That one worked the best for me. First thing we need to do is we need to figure out what the IP address of the virtual machine is. So we do an if config on the virtual machine. Uh-oh. It looks like we don't have the host only adapter here. We have the 10.0.2.15 and we need the uh, 192 host only adapter. So if you do an if config minus a, it'll show all of the adapters and including the ones that are not configured. And there it is, ENP0S8. So we're gonna go ahead and need to edit the networking configuration on the virtual machine to include the host only adapter. VI Etsy network interfaces. Password is password and we're gonna go on down here to the bottom and press I for insert and press enter a couple of times and we're going to repeat the lines above but this time for EMP0S8. MyNet DHCP. Press escape and then hold down shift and do ZZ and that'll save the file. Now we need to restart the networking on the Linux machine so Etsy init d slash networking restart. After it's restarted, let's do an if config. Aha, we have our host only adapter and there's our IP address. So we can go ahead and go to the command prompt. I'll show you it on Windows just to prove the point. You can see the host only adapter on Windows. Um, it's the 192.168.56.1. That's the host only adapter on Windows, which will allow us to connect to the virtual machine. We're going to open up PuTTY and we're going to put in the IP address of the virtual machine. Just press open. And we're going to have to respond yes on this security alert. The username is our pre configured username user and the password is password now we're on the shell on our virtual machine using putty that allows us to follow along and copy and paste commands into our virtual machine a lot easier and from this tutorial the step by step the first command we just copy and paste so step one we're going to do a curl command Right click, copy, and then right click on PuTTY to paste. You just right click and it'll paste it. The password is password. And done. Next step, we're going to do this app get repo uh, repository here all the way down to the last quotation mark. Copy and paste. Done. Step three, an app get update, copy and paste. There we go. And step four, Copy and paste. Pay attention to the output here. And it tells you to compare it to the output you would expect. Looks good. Copy and paste the next command. We're going to install Docker. Done with that. And now we're going to take a look at the status. Oh, it looks like we're green and it's active and running. Okay. We're going to compare that to the output we expect over there. Yep, looks good. All done. We've successfully installed Docker Engine on our virtual machine. Next thing we need to do is we're needing to create a user account on Windows for sharing purposes. So let's click on Start, go to the Control Panel, click on User Accounts, click on 
remove user accounts and then we click on add a new user in PC settings and this is the Windows 10 interface add someone else to this PC and we're gonna say I don't have that person's sign-in information and click on add a user without a Microsoft account this will allow us to make a local user we're just gonna call it share user password password and we do have to put a hint in there to satisfy the minimum requirements and next now we have a brand new uh, user account we're gonna change that to administrator just so that we don't have any problems with security or permissions or anything press OK and we're done with that now we're gonna create a new folder on our desktop and we're just gonna call it share we're gonna right click we're gonna go to properties here we're gonna go to sharing advanced sharing and make sure that's turned on add and we're going to add the share user press ok and make sure it's full control press ok press ok go to security go to edit and add the share user here as well and give them full control done with that now we're going to go ahead and map that file that folder on our linux machine so we're going to go ahead and elevate up to root su e minus we're going to make a directory. Let's make a directory and we'll do it in MNT share. Before we can mount it, we need to install a package called SIFS uh, to facilitate Windows sharing. So in order to do that, we're going to type in apt hyphen git install SIFS utils. Press enter and you say yes, you want to install it and done. Now we can mount the folder that we just shared in Windows and the command is mount minus T which is type SIFS forward slash forward slash the IP address of the Windows machine 192.168.56.1 slash share and we're gonna put it in MNT share on the local machine and we need to give it the credentials so it's minus O username equals share user comma password equals password press enter and we got it mounted now you can do a list of the directory you see nothing's there we can go ahead and create a folder in here new folder just call it new folder and now we can do an ls and there's our new folder on linux so we can see the folder we just created Vice versa, let's touch a file on that directory and you should see it show up on Windows. There's our test file right there. We just created it on the Linux machine. So now you can see how the folder cross talks between the two operating systems. So the next step, we need to get our Evergreen ILS server running. And to introduce you to that, it's um, Docker Hub. And at Docker Hub, you can just type search in Evergreen and there you'll see the Evergreen ILS entry now this is how you run it docker run minus it for interactive and then we're going to map some ports so minus p 80 colon 80 that's port 80 on the virtual machine over to port 80 in the docker container and the same for 443 the same for 7680 which is the web-based staff client and the same for 7682 also web-based staff client and let's go ahead and and map um, the SIP ports and we can get the Postgres database as well and now we're gonna map the share folder from our Ubuntu virtual machine into the docker container so MNT share over to MNT share and we'll go ahead and sync up the time Etsy time zone over to Etsy time zone and that has to be read only so colon read only and we'll give it a host name docker app one test domain dot com that doesn't really matter and now we need to get it the image 
So the image name is Mobius Office slash Evergreen ILS, just like that. And we can go ahead and pick a version of Evergreen. So that's the tags. We have here all the different versions, and we're going to choose 2.12.4. And we'll go ahead and put that in there. Mobius Office slash Evergreen hyphen ILS colon 2.12.4. Press Enter. So the first thing is, is downloading the image, and then it'll go ahead and launch the Docker container. This will take a little while. Once it downloads it, it'll remember it for the next time. Here we go. Now it's done downloading and the Docker container is launching. This is kind of what it looks like. It's still launching. It takes a little bit of time to launch. Open up a web browser and go to the IP address of the virtual machine. And you will see the Evergreen ILS running the default Concerto data set. You can search for stuff, but we forgot to get the SSH port mapped over. If you remember, we did not include an SSH port. So we're going to need to go ahead and start this again. Let's go ahead and cancel this Docker container. You just press Control C. There we go. And now you're back to the prompt on the virtual machine. As you can see, the OPAC is down. We're going to do a Docker PS. This will show us the running containers. Nothing is running. If you do a Docker PS minus A, you'll see all the Docker containers that were running and the ones that are running. I'm going to widen this out so you can see it better. So there's our uh, container that we just killed. Um, it exited 33 seconds ago. There's our container ID. Before we run the command again, let's go ahead and just delete this old running container. And to do that, it's docker, rm, and then the container ID. In PuTTY, you can just highlight stuff and it'll copy it. And then you right click and paste it. So docker rm container id, press enter, and that deletes it. Now you can do a ps minus a, and you see that there's nothing. Now we're going to go ahead and run the command again. And this time we're going to include our port map for SSH. So minus p, and let's do 32 to 22. We have to choose 32 because 22 is already taken by the virtual machine. As you notice, it didn't have to download the image again, so it just starts up right away. But this time, we will have our port 32 mapped to the Docker containers 22. So in PuTTY, we can give it the 192.168.56.101, the same IP address, but we change the port to port 32, and then it will map that into port 22 in the Docker container. So here we go. Press open, respond yes, and we're logging in. Uh, the login is the same. It's user and password only because that's the way the Docker container is designed. Uh, you can read the documentation on Docker Hub. So user and the password's password. And here we are. We're looking at Docker App 1. This is not our virtual machine. This is the Docker machine that's running Evergreen Server. While we're waiting for it to launch the Evergreen software, we can take a look at the MNT directory. The MNT directory has the folder share, and then we can look at the contents of share, and look, there's our stuff, the new folder and the test. So we've successfully connected the file share from Windows all the way down into the Docker container. Now that it's done launching, and you can tell it's done launching because it says play recap there at the bottom. That's how you know. Now remember, you don't want to press control C, otherwise you will lose your Docker container. You don't want to do that. You want to leave it running. So in order to leave it running, you press control P and then Q. That will bring you back to the bash prompt for the virtual machine, leaving the Docker container intact. And to prove it, you can type in docker ps and see that the docker container is running still under status. It's been up for four minutes and still up. And there's our list of ports. And you can see that the OPAC is back. And we can interact with the OPAC. That will conclude the second installment of Hacking Evergreen. 
I really appreciate you watching. I hope you had a good time. I hope you're as excited as I am. And I'll see you on the next video.